flies, me ain't a n cold as me, ain't another n got a swag quite like But hold me. up, hold up, that's the way I feel But hold up, hold up, but that's the way I feel Yo, swinging and banging on these ones and twos The black history lesson is so real, I'm starting with a beer Then I'ma give y'all these gratitudes So number one Give y'all that intention today. And as you can see, my intention is to have fun and enjoy this. It's freezing cold. It's 20, 30 degrees outside. But it is my daughter's go-kart birthday party. And that's why my intention is just to have fun, enjoy this. Despite the cold, I'm going to have a good-ass time with this shit. Despite the MS, I'm going to have a good as time with this and damn all the spondylosis and everything that had to do with that i'm about to have a good time with this and it starts with your intention that's why i put that first enjoy okay now i've done my yoga and everything i'm sorry i ain't done no yoga today yet i did a little bit of yoga yesterday but i have done nothing today i didn't take any vitamins and supplements yesterday my intention was the water i think i got 25 ounces in so obviously and I put that because I told y'all weekends come around and I tend to fall off and slack off. I have to start over with my double manifestation because I didn't do it at all last night. Starting over with that. Call to action. Y'all know you need to go to allthingsonelove.com. Check out the Black History Story, the Black History Lesson. I've even redone that menu for you all so you can get to the Black History Story just by going to the... It's either in the blog section or it's in the free resources. I should, I, sh I, I should know that. I know I should know that. Value. The Black History Story is about, I'm trying to help y'all understand where all of this drama and conflict comes in that between black people and police, between black people and prison. I want y'all to understand why prison needs reform and what that has to do with black history. Because all of this is so closely related, it's, it's mind-blowing. I want y'all to understand this. After the Civil War, y'all know Abraham Lincoln let the slaves, set slaves free. He released the slaves. Cool beans, great stuff. What you don't know, well, a lot of y'all do know, after, after the slavery ends, there are stuff like black codes, there are things like Jim Crow, Jim Crow laws, and there's this thing called peonage. The black codes and the Jim Crow laws are things like if a black person crosses the street and looks at a white person in the eye, jail time, locked up. Um, black codes and Jim Crow laws were things like, well, all the stuff with the segregation, second grade, breaking things apart, whites only fountains, whites only restaurants, all that has to do with Jim Crow laws, segregation. The word you got to understand today is peonage. And what peonage has to do with black history, prison reform, the issue with police right now is that during this time, after the Civil War, after slaves are free, after Lincoln has signed that Emancipation Proclamation, peonage is when you can lock somebody up and because of their crime, you can make them do jobs, make them do required work. So up until, you y'all have all seen the Looney Tunes cartoons and everything. You always see the cartoon characters busting up rocks and shit like that whenever they're in prison. That's the way prison used to be. You're just busting up rocks and doing a bunch of manual ass labor until after the Civil War. Once slaves are freed, they still need a workforce to work on these cotton plantations. So they start up peonage. And peonage again is when you lock somebody up and you make them do jobs for some type of nonsense bullshit ass crime. So from 1865, the end of the Civil, the end of the Civil War, until the 1970s, y'all. The 1970s, peonage is alive and popping in this great nation of ours. And they're doing things like this. Up until the 1960s, if your child skipped school in Louisiana, you, the parents, both parents could face jail time for years. And your jail time, you're doing stuff like, you're doing stuff like, you're not busting on rocks anymore because peonage is making you work a real job now. So during your jail time, because your kid skipped school, you might for five or six years go to prison and you're making the clothes for McDonald's. You're making the stuff at, until the 1980s, 
you'll be making the products at Ikea. You're doing this for years because your child skipped school. And it couldn't even be because they skipped school. Maybe you sent your kid to the store and the police saw your kid walk to the store and said, hey, vagrant, skipping, got him. Your kid says, hey, it's Saturday. I'm not, it's not, there's no school on Saturday. Doesn't matter, because at that point now, they got you, you're locked up. And you're doing years of time and you're making things like, I had to write some of this shit down, y'all. You're making stuff like the clothes at McDonald's. From the 1965, 1865, until the 1970s, they even hire police officers. They hire police officers to fill up prisons so that stuff like Mickey D's gets their uniforms made. Prisoners are making the police clothes. Prisoners are making the military uniforms. It's fucked up because police are locking up black people at this crazy rate and they have them doing all these crazy things of peonage. Now the police are not, I'm, police are not all the way in on the peonage part. That's the governmental practice. But they're locking us up at these crazy rates. And you know there is a huge, huge culture difference, a huge thing between blacks and police. Did y'all know that inmates, these black inmates, are making the human silhouette targets for police? Tell me that's not fucked up on some kind of level, man. That they're locking us up and they have us making their uniforms, military uniforms, human target silhouettes, the Mickey D uniforms. Folks, inmates are actually hired to make Victoria's Secrets lingeries. They make the parts for Honda cars. We make the Microsoft software. It is crazy what they're having black people do in prison. And this is peonage. They're locking us up at these ridiculous rates because ever since the Civil War ended, peonage gives your state government, gives your government the right to lock you up and have you doing real ass jobs while you are locked up for your crime. And it's stuff like, your kids skipping school. There was one in, I think it's Alabama, where if you cross the state lines with a duck or a chicken, punishable by punishable by prison time. The hell, man? And you're in prison for years at a time doing this type of stuff. On a nationwide level, blacks are locked up at a five to one rate of whites. That means for every one white person, there's five black people locked up. On a nationwide level, one out of every 81 black males is locked up. In Wisconsin, where the George Floyd thing happened and the police shot the man in the back, one out of every 36 black men is locked up. 12 states have over 50% black prison populations. Seven states have a nine to one ratio, where it's not one white person Nine black people locked up. California is like that. And you might ask, well, what about brown people and shit? Brown people come in second. For every one white person locked up, there's 1.3 brown people. Five black, 1.3 brown people. This shit is crazy, y'all. This shit is crazy. Over 1% of black men in this country are locked up. Over 1%. Half of 1% for brown. Point two percent point two percent for whites and this goes back to peonage the word again is peonage and that's when you're locking people up for trivial ass crimes and they have to do these real jobs and they're not even getting paid for it now it became illegal in the 1970s but you've got to understand if from 1865 to the 1970s this is alive and popping. I don't know what makes y'all think in 40 years it's just chilled out. It hasn't. That's why these numbers are so damn high. Peonage. This is a part of black history that is fucking with us all. Peonage. Got it? Good. Now, to some lighter news. <clears throat> Me. My gratitude. Here we go. Today is the go-kart birthday party for kid number three. She turned 13 last week and the weather has had us, everybody locked up, it's freezing cold, stuck inside. Today, everybody is looking forward to this go-kart party, even my older kids, 
and this should be a memorable event with all type of videos and pictures. I'll be in charge of that. That's gratitude number one. Gratitude number two, props to my wife. She apologized for something that hurt my feelings and I didn't even expect it. I was trying to be hard about it. I really was. I was trying to be hardcore about it, but I couldn't. And that shit made me feel seen, made me feel like I matter. Got to give her props to that. So I salute and I bow to her for that. My last one, I got three sweaters on right now. And that's what I'm grateful for. Grateful that I found three sweaters to wear at one time. This is needed because it's cold as fuck outside. And being cold causes these seizures and tremors from my multiple sclerosis. It also wrecks on my spondylosis. But damn it, I'm determined to go see these go-kart races. So I've got the three sweaters on. I've been trying it out in the garage to make sure I, I'm some kind of warm. And I know I got the cold weather shook up because I can feel myself a whole lot warmer. I know I got the cold weather shook up. I want to see these go-kart races. And this is how it starts. Plus, my son bought me a weighted blanket for Christmas. So I will be at the go-kart races. I got everything I need. Y'all be pretty. Stay grateful. Spread this message of Black History Month. See y'all tomorrow. I'm out. The value statement is the Malcolm X quote. People don't realize how one book can change a person's life. One book can change a person's life. Doing It's a Malcolm X quote. What the hell do you think we are doing with this gratitude journal? This is the book that will change your life because it is a chronicle album of everything rocking and rolling and going good in your life. You just don't celebrate them. You just don't celebrate. You don't celebrate people coming home. They're just coming home. You don't celebrate a good meal. You just enjoy it. You don't celebrate the squad coming together to watch any damn thing. You just watch it. And when you celebrate it, yo man, when you make this your book, your album, this is the book that can change your life.